Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week, is it six? I believe it's six of the PGL and U Cup. And we've been having a really fun time. I think we've been doing decently well so far, but we're up against a pretty darn difficult opponent here. We're going to be facing the Tampa Bay Lux race at the exception. And he is a pretty darn scary team. Uh, I'm not too, too sure if I'm going to be able to match up well against it. Um, he might honestly have this matchup. I'm not quite sure yet, but I think, I think I can pull this out. I feel like it is a little bit risky because I do have so many special attackers. Any type of special wall, I'm really gonna have a lot of trouble with, especially if that Delphox starts call mining up. But here we go, here we go. We're just gonna take a look at the team Persian, Sandslash, Phariseed, Noivern, Primeape, and Delphox. So, really, really notable. No Comfey. So, I do have the Guzzlord this week. It's gonna be Guzzlord's debut, and it's gonna be the debut of Mr. Mime. But yes, uh, let me see here. No Quillfish, no Quillfish, no Sableye. I was so afraid to Sableye. That's actually why I brought so many special attackers. I did not want to have my whole team Will-O-Wisp. No Volbeat, which is huge, so I don't have to worry as much about Thunder Waving. And let me see. His the, the rest of his team is still pretty darn scary. No Luxray, which is also huge. So I do have a Specs Cryogonal that I want to try to set up in this later game. Part of me just kind of wants to lead with that Vicavolt here. But I also just kind of think that the Cryogonal lead is, isn't bad here. Actually, I think the Vicavolt lead is really good. Unless he leads Delphox, but I don't know. He wouldn't lead Delphox, I don't think. I could just lead the Guzzlord. I might just want to lead the Guzzlord. Would I lead the Guzzlord? I'm going to lead the Vicavolt. I'm almost out of time, which sucks. I feel like this was a little bit of a rush decision. I am trying to uh, talk through my kind of team my thought process a little bit but um yeah i think i don't know i should i could have led guzzlord i'm not sure i'm not sure actually i didn't write down any of his team so let me see definitely to the the del fox pharaoh seed noivern primeape sand slash what's this thing Oh, okay. So, okay, this thing actually has the Charty Berry just for this specific situation in case of that Stone Edge. And what was the last mod? I think I only wrote down five. Oh, Persian. Persian. Okay, so I definitely would not be surprised to see the, the Stone Edge come through here. And like I said, I do have the Charty Berry. I do have the Charty Berry, so let's pull up and see how much uh, we should be doing with... Oh no, where did my Calc go? Oh no, I'm gonna have to pull up another Calc. This is so unprofessional. I just imported my sets and I guess I deleted the tab? I don't know. Primeape. At level 50, up against this Vicavolt. Thunderbolt does a whole heck of a lot. I'm just gonna click Thunderbolt. Let's see what this does. If he goes into the Sand Clash, then I guess that's fine. I do have the Energy Ball, obviously, and I still have that Charty Berry, so I don't know. I think he's gonna be pretty confident um, just deciding to be in here. Either be in here in Stone Edge or go out into the Sand Slash. And I feel like I have myself covered in both scenarios. Now, he's taking quite a bit of time to uh, decide. Let me see. Does he go into the Sand Slash here? <sighs> yeah, U-turning. I should have seen the U-turn coming. But, however, I do think this still puts me in a position where I'll be able to handle the Sand Slash. I have to, ex I have to imagine the Sand Slash is coming. But let me see. Sand Slash. How much does a... How much does an energy ball do? It almost takes it out, but... And then I'm forced to switch out next turn. I don't know. Bug Buzz does almost as much, which is kind of wild. It does over half. Well... Oh, that's at level 100. Oops. Oh, energy ball is a straight Oko. Energy ball is a straight Oko, but you have to go into Sand Slash, I think. Going into anything else would be really, really bad. Going into anything else would be pretty bad for him. I think his only switch into Vicavolt is the Sand Slash, and he's taking a lot of 
uh, time to think out his turns. Raspberry. That is going to be this thing. But now... We're going to judge based off of this damage. Pharaoh Seed. Pharaoh Seed. Uh, I'm going to assume max HP. And I'm going to give it the Evil Light before I forget that. That actually might be really defense, really specially defensive. In power, if that's yeah, if that's, I think that might be max special defense, which means that HP fire won't take it out. But I need to take it out somehow, and I think that this is going to be as good a time as any to, to be able to do this. This is honestly going to be as good a time as any. Now I don't think that this is going to pack. Uh. A rock type move. I think if anything, it just sets up rocks or something. Oh, dump makes that double switch into what? Into the Delphox to take this in power fire. Okay, that was a very good play. I'm yeah. I should be thinking this out more. And that was a very very good play. That was just and that was also just me being bad. Now he's in a very good position to set up his own call mines. He can do a lot, but would he pack the Dazzling Gleam? See, if he has the Calm Mind, then that would lead me to think that he might not have the Dazzling Gleam. But either way, I think the best play has to be to go into... Well, no, if anything, that, that was a play that I had to make because to allow him to get Rocks up for free would have been really pretty detrimental to my Cryogonal and my uh, Vicavolt later on in the match if I had to switch it back in, so... I guess in that situation it was worth it for it was more worth it for me to attack what was in front of me. I'm fine with that. But also he has to pack grass coverage, right? So he has to have he might be Bloom Doom. I would actually I would be surprised if he wasn't Bloom Doom, right? So what does that mean for me? It means I could double switch into the Guzzlord? Yeah, that's my play. That's my play. Whatever he does, he probably calm mines here, but whatever he does. Um, it's on me to double switch in the Guzzlord right now. Um, because there's no chance that he doesn't have the Z Solar Beam. I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking right now. Flame Charge. So, what's my, what's my Scarfer? Do I have a Scarfer? I don't have a Scarfer. So, whatever. It's fine. So, Flame Charge. Let me think this through. Flame Charge, Flame Charge, Flame Charge. I still wouldn't rule out the fact that he has Calm Mind. But also, I'm, I also... I'm pretty darn confident that he has the Z Solar Beam, so I'm going to double right now into my boy Guzzlord. Let's see if we could scare this thing out. Oh, he, he switches out himself, so possibly no... Possibly no... Uh... Z Solar Beam, which would be interesting. Maybe regular Solar Beam? I don't know. I don't know. That's really interesting. Either way, I do get my Guzzlord out here. I reveal Leftovers, which is... Fine. Oh, I didn't even make sure which beast boost I got. That is huge on me. I, it should be a special attack beast boost. But I have to make sure about that, in all honesty. Yeah, no, definitely special attack beast boost. I do have the hidden power ice. But I feel like Dark Pulse just does more. And I kind of don't think he stays in. Guzzlord against... Sand Slash. Blank set Sand Slash at level 50. Yeah, HP Ice barely does more than Dark Pulse. And Dark Pulse covers his team a whole lot, heck of a lot more. Um. Yeah, there's no reason I feel like not to just Dark Pulse here. Although. Although, I could predict the Primeape to come in and try to knock off any potential Choice Scarf, because a Choice Scarf on that Primeape would be huge. It would be gigantic right now. I feel like I can't leave that damage on the, on the, on the field, though. Let me see. Primeape... I'm going to click Dark Pulse. If he goes into Primeape... No, it just sets up rocks. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So we should do a whole bunch of damage. We should do over half. We should do over half. Yeah, okay. 
Okay, we're still in decent shape-ish. And unfortunately, we're not at the range, I don't think, where I can take this thing out with a with a knockoff. Because that would be ideal right now, in case of a switch. But he has no real reason to keep this thing around, I guess. Maybe the Vic Vault? I'm not sure. Cryogonal, maybe? No, Cryogonal, definitely not. Um... Maybe the Gigalith, maybe just to get damage off on the Gigalith, but he could be relying on that on other mons for that. Yeah, he's just barely out of range of a knockoff too, which really, really does stink. But also, he doesn't want to give me a beast boost. He doesn't want to give me a beast boost, right? I feel like, yeah, I feel like him not wanting to give me a beast boost might be reason enough to, to, uh... to go for that knockoff. This could be a choke, though. This could be a choke right now. Oh, man, this is an actually difficult decision for me. I'm gonna click... I'm gonna click knockoff. Does he switch? No, he just stays in. Yeah, that that was that was a last second decision. It's okay. We take it decently well. We take it decently well. And yeah, I knew he was out of range. That's fine. We could deal with that. And now we are still very weak to the primate, but we would have been anyway. So. It's not the biggest deal in the world. We can just Dark Pulse here. Now that I've shown the knockoff, he's not going to want to uh, stay in. Or he's not going to want to switch out, I should say. I still do definitely want to get rocks up with Gigalith. But what could I do that on? Cryogonal has Rapid Spin, but it's... Oh, he withdraws. Into what? Into this thing. Okay. So I do get the Dark Pulse off. Doesn't do a whole lot. Let's answer on some sides. What does that mean? I don't think this thing does a lot to me. So, okay, here's the thing, right? He could want a parting shot into the Delphox in order to flame charge, or he could parting shot into the Noivern to get a free switch in a Noivern. You could also parting shot in a Primeape. I don't know. What would you parting shot into? Either way, I think the play is to knock off here. I don't think he can do too much to me yet. Does he get like some fairy coverage that I'm not aware of? I'm trying to think of why he would do this. Possibly for Delphox, but does the Delphox have the Dazzling Gleam? I kind of think not. I don't know. I think he's trying to set something up right now. So I kind of want to knock off, but I don't want to double in case I call that wrong. I think knocking off is probably the safest play. Let's see what happens. Is that Z... No, Twinkle Tackle. What? Okay. Does this thing get Dazzling Gleam? Okay, you know, you know what? He, he burned the Z-move, which, again, lead, this leads me to think that, um... The Delphox doesn't have... Oh, this was for my Malamar, I bet. This was for my Malamar, I bet. He probably didn't have the Z-move if that, if that was the case. So, yeah, okay. Okay. I think now is as good a time as any to just try to set up some rocks. Does he have removal? Possibly Defog Noivern? Oh, Sand Slash, of course. Oh, he wanted to keep Sand Slash just for the rapid spin. Hmm. Huh. 
let me think this through. Yeah, this is what I mean. I did not have this matchup at all. Hmm. I don't know what I want to do yet. I think now might be a good a time as any to, to try to set up some rocks. That's my only thinking in this situation. That's my only thinking in this situation. He could switch into the Sand Slash right now, but um, that makes me want to, like, Toxic here, actually. I think the Sand Slash was low enough where around a round of Toxic will take him out. should just Earthquake here, right? What would he go into? He'd go into... No. Noivern's a no-go. Primate, maybe. I can Earthquake here just for some damage here. But also, yeah, I'm gonna Toxic. Or no. I could Substitute right here. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click Substitute. Goes for the Parting Shot. That's fine. That's totally fine. It's a sound-based move, so even if I was somehow faster, um, it didn't matter too, too much. I'm really curious to see what he goes into now, though. All of these switches have been such just 50-50s, and I don't quite know. Raspberry, yeah. Okay. There's a sub. Maybe you expect me to Toxic in that situation? Is he trying to set up spikes? Oh, man, if he's trying to... Yeah, if he's trying to set up spikes right now, that's actually bad. That's actually bad. Well, okay, it's not the worst thing in the world because Cryogonal can come in later and Cryogonal can rapid spin. Let me see Pharaoh Seed. Level 50. Max HP. I think we've already determined that it's max special defense. I assume Cryogonal like scares it out. Well, Cryogonal can HP fire this thing, but does Freeze Dry scare it out? And not, not yet. It would have. I'd have to get it below half. But at the same time, this Ferro Seed, yeah, this Ferro Seed can't break me. And yeah, now I think now he's considering. Uh, maybe he went into this thing just to a prevent Toxic and Toxic me in return. If that's the case, then um then subbing was my best play. And if he's considering another switch, then that would honestly be pretty ideal. And honestly, if he doesn't go into Sand Slash with this turn, then the Sand Slash is definitely threatened by Stealth Rocks on re-entry. I don't think it takes it out, but it like gets it really low. Let's me get off the rocks. Now I, we get to see what the heck this set is. I don't think Gyro Ball is going to do anything. Oh, also, Spikes. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to have to prioritize Cryogonal. But, like I said, as long as this gets to under half, then I'm not too, too scared about that. Although, I shouldn't put it, put it in against this thing because of the Gyro Ball hostility. So, we're not in a great situation. And I believe... Well, no, he hasn't seen Toxic yet, but uh, I'm just going to Earthquake here. I know it doesn't do, like, anything to this thing. I think it's right around like 15% expected damage, but we can we can try to peep that right now. Oh, it does a little bit more. Oh, because I think before I calced against max defense, so Earthquake should do a decent chunk to this thing. Oh, I didn't give it Eevee Light. That's, um, of course, I always forget those these types of things. Well, let's see. Yeah, once you give it Eevee Light, it's bad. It's real bad. It just gets more spikes up. But as this happens, I'm just, I'm getting more health back. I'm getting more health back, so I don't know. And he's gonna leave me behind his sub, so even if he does get up like three layers, 
then Cryogonal, that frees up Cryogonal to come in later, first of all, and, um, and, I wouldn't have to worry about the Gyro Ball later. I do have to worry about whatever the heck Delphox is going to do to me, but, oh, this is going to bite me in the butt so bad, dude. I do have some Levitating Mon, so Vicavolt and Cryogonal. Don't have to take the spikes. If I could just find a moment to get Cryogonal in here, then I can Rapid Spin freely, but I want to do that as soon as I possibly can. We've both just been sitting here on the field. He's probably going to Gyro Ball me eventually, right? But Gyro Ball... Can I take three Gyro Balls before he breaks the sub? Possibly. It's a possibility. So according to this, Gyro Ball is at 7 to 10%. Which means I possibly can take 3 before he has to... I can possibly take 4 with that sub. Either 3 or 4. If I can win this with my sub intact, that would be kind of bananas, but I think he's finding out now. Oh, actually, the fact that Gyro Ball does so little means that even if he does, oh, yeah, he fades it in two. I don't know. Maybe I missed something, but how did he fade it in two? I don't think he has attack investment. I'm going to sub up again. Or should I? Yeah, I should. Yeah, I should. Especially, yeah, especially if he's feeding this sub in two hits, then yeah, definitely. Man, this is not going the way that I thought it would, but... Yeah, we're just gonna have to see what happens. I don't think that this is going to be anything crazy that goes to timer. I think once like this exchange is over, I think um, things are going to go by a lot quick quicker. But um, for right now, this is we just have to get through this part of the battle right now. What's his Gigalith answer after this thing goes down? Primate probably comes in. Does this take him out? It might. No, he just barely hangs on. So, it does let me get up another sub, and I will be behind a sub after this exchange, which is fine, but I would have been anyway if I'd just taken him out. I would have been behind a sub. <sighs> That's actually crazy to me. Why does... Oh! Oh, I bet I know, because he's a negative speed nature, and I didn't put that into the calc. If he's negative speed, then yeah... Oh, maybe not. I'm a negative speed Gigalith. So this should be like a 40 base power Gyro Ball. So he... Is he attack invested? Is he attack invested? I think he has to be. Either way. I always click sub, there's no reason not to. And uh, he has no reason to resist Fair Seed because it's going to be um, taken out to rocks on re-entry, so I don't have a whole ton to worry about there. And I think, except for the Prime Ape, whatever... Oh, no, no. Except for the Prime Ape and the Delphox, I was gonna say, whatever... Um, he brings in to take on this Gigalith. It was for the withdrawal, so let's me get up another sub.
but this thing's faster than me, so he can rapid spin, but I can... Hmm. He can rapid spin right now, but I can... set up rocks again. Let me think this through. So, I think he just wants to break the sub, so I'm not behind a sub when something else comes in to take me out. Is that all he wants out of this exchange? It has to be. If he rapid spins now... If he rapid spins now, then I'm still behind a sub and I can set up rocks neck uh, on whatever comes in anyway or later on in the match possibly oh no my my ds is on red so i'm gonna i have to go rush out and get the thing so unfortunately i was not able to find my ds charger at all but uh then we got to a place where we could both kind of just agree that we knew how the match was going to end up and we definitely decided on a winner so it was definitely a definitive win but uh not one that actually ended up playing out to the very end unfortunately i did have to dc because my battery just ran out and i feel super bad about it of course all of the apologies to exception um I feel really bad about it. and if anything I feel really bad because I had to take I had to go down to timer on pretty much all of my plays because I was legitimately looking for this thing everywhere but uh, you guys can see he went out into his primate and I felt confident enough that I could take close combat I uh, clearly not well um, but I was confident enough and the only usefulness that I would really have in this situation would be to um, go for a toxic because a stone age would be resisted i couldn't set up a sub and really this was the only real use that i was going to get out of it however i was pretty concerned convinced at this point i should say that this thing was choice so here i pull a, a little bit of a double to mr mime as he goes out into the noivern and this is a pretty dope situation to be in because i'm pretty confident enough that i can take a hit um i do have a lot of special defense and i would be able to thunder wave this i wasn't too too confident about being able to dazzling gleam so i did kind of hedge a little bit with that dazzling uh, with that thunder wave but um i ended up thinking to myself even if this mr mime does go down to whatever this thing wants to do i felt confident enough that uh i could revenge it if it's thunder waved but i end up going for the dazzling gleam on the follow-up play and we do end up taking it out so it was never really too much of a concern but like i said i just felt like i had to hedge my bets however this is enough damage where unfortunately i can't switch in again and uh, take the rocks and the spikes, which is super unfortunate. So definitely definite kudos to him for being able to set up so many layers of hazards. And uh, in comes the Delphox. And if I'm not mistaken, I do end up switching out into the Gigalith. Yeah, I do just let this go down on the switch in. I knew it was gonna uh, go down to rocks in this situation. However, I don't think I noticed this when I originally had the battle, but uh, it ends up preventing his flame charge, which is super clutch because now my now my duck trio can come in and outspeed it. And and honestly, I think I was so stressed out and I was like running back and forth between um where this was where this battle was and uh looking everywhere for my DS charger that I didn't even notice that I prevented the flame charge. And if he had gone for the flame charge in right there, then that would have been bad. But he's probably like a modest nature or something like that. Um, some kind of negative attack nature, so he felt like he couldn't risk it against this like, trio. Either way, um, if I had just gone for the Earthquake, this thing would have gone down, and it would have been bananas for the end game. in honesty, but I try to set up a sub, assuming that he would want to switch out, and he just stays in, flamethrowers, and he ends up switching out next turn when I don't set up the sub, and I do take out the Alolan Persian, but I would have preferred to hit that Delphox. In any case, he brings in this Primeape. Now this, of course, just screams Scarf. At this point, I am 100% convinced that this is Scarf. I end up going into my Mime, and that ends up going down to Entry Hazards. I honestly forgot at this point in the match how badly that it was injured at this point, but I do end up going to the Vicka Vault. Now, in this situation, I'm thinking either one of two things is gonna happen. Either it's not Scarf, and it goes for like a Stone Edge, and I'm Charty Berry, or it goes for close combat, and I resist it, I think I take it. So he ends up switching out, and at that point, that confirmed to me that this thing was, in fact, Scarf. I mean, as if it wasn't already confirmed. And uh, unfortunately, that's when the battery does die. So, I mean, it 
those genuinely really suck that the end game had to happen that way. And again, kudos to him for getting all those entry hazards up. But we definitely just kind of agreed that the Delphox coming in would have given him a free flame charge, which then would have uh, gotten him to plus one speed. My only play at that point would be to bring in my Alolan Duck Trio, go for a Sucker Punch, which probably takes out the Delphox, but then the Scarred Primeape is then able to clean up the rest of the KOs in this match. So super unfortunate way to lose, um, super unfortunate way to have this game play out. Again, I'm so, so sorry for letting us DC in that way. Thankfully, it didn't affect you too much. Like I said, at, at the point where my battery finally gave out and we did DC, the match was pretty much decided. So it doesn't affect too, too much overall. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more PGPL battles. And we will end out the season of the PGLNU Cup really, really soon. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll be once again out.